Well, one day his mom found it covered with mud out on the back porch. Well, she rescued it, had it cleaned, and told him someday that she wanted to see that jacket hanging in the Hall of Fame. And Voila, I guess McMom got her wish. McMom huh? got her wish. Well, you know, Terry Clark got her wish this week, didn't she? She sure did. Her very first number one song, Now That I Found You, struck a chord with fans all over the country, and it will top the radio and record country chart next week. It's a different kind of song for Terry, but she told Gail Grasso she believed in it from the beginning. You know, it's just one of those, oh, <laughs> songs, you know what I mean? <laughs> well, Terry is singing her brand new number one and all of her hits on the road, opening for Reba McIntyre and Brooks and Dunn. Okay, right now we have the latest on John Barry's vocal surgery. Now learn how to fly a plane. Oh, yeah, that's good. <laughs> Don't say that. <laughs> we know John really is learning to fly. He even offered to take Stormy for a little ride, but after careful consideration and because he is a scaredy cat, you know, <laughs> Stormy opted to keep both feet on the I don't ground. know, after that uh, description, maybe I wouldn't John. have gotten on there either. Here's something that is taking off, though. It's this biscuit craze. Now, not only are fans throwing biscuits at John, but at a concert in Santa Barbara, California tonight, he will be presented with a four foot by eight foot biscuit as bakers there attempt to break <laughs> a world's record. Well, as you probably know, Nashville was hit hard by a string of tornadoes back in April. And one of the spots that was just devastated was a national treasure, President Andrew Jackson's home, the Hermitage. God bless you, and let's get to work. You know, that guitar is made from two incredible trees, a 275-year-old tulip poplar that was uprooted, as well as a hickory that grew in the garden near Andrew and Rachel Jackson's graves. The first three guitars went to the Smithsonian, the Hermitage, and Al Gore. And to see it up close is just amazing, the incredible imagine. detailed work. Now, only 200 will be made, and the price tag on them, can you guess? You uh, know? A lot. $5,000 wow. each. You can save up and get one later this year when they become available. Well, now, here is Lisa Young with more of the latest news. Reba, Kix, and Ronnie are sitting pretty at the top of CMT's playlist. All 12 videos in CMT's countdown will play out this Friday at 10 p.m. Eastern. Well, you know, you are hearing a lot of country music lately on movie soundtracks, and that can mean big things for the country stars. Yeah, like it did for Trisha Yearwood this year. She got to perform her hit from the movie Con Air at the Oscars in front of, oh, say, about a billion <laughs> people. Well, other country stars realize that next year it could be them on the Oscar stage. And the prospect has a few of them feeling everything from overwhelming excitement to a stomachache. Gail Grasso reports. I'd really love to do my part. <laughs> and the movie music doesn't stop there. This December, the soundtrack for The Prince of Egypt will feature stars like Reba McIntyre, Vince Gill, Clint Black, and Randy Travis. Well, you know, Reba knows exactly what it's like to sing at the Oscars, but I think it was at another award show where she may have experienced her proudest moment. Well, the movie Armageddon has ma uh, passed the magical 100 million mark this past weekend. Are you kidding weekend. me already? No, is already. that true, Jimmy? That Did is absolutely true, and uh, it is a pretty big hit. Making, and, you know, a lot a of movies, in fact, a lot of movies uh, this summer are doing really well. No one's really going out there and killing them like Titanic, but there are a lot of movies that are doing very well. I mean, Lethal Weapon took off with a bang. Armageddon's done well. Mulan is doing very well. Dr. Doolittle is doing great. And uh, this movie's going to make a guy a star. You know, well, you didn't know who he was I the know, other week. You promised me that you would introduce me to <laughs> Hollywood's newest honk, who I don't know that much about. I know he won an Oscar for mm -hmm. writing, uh, co-writing Good Will Hunting. Have you seen his picture? That's it. I've you seen his? No. Well, I want to see if you see, see if you think he's a hunk. I'm not a hunkologist. Okay. He's already <laughs> won an Oscar. Okay, now we, we've got a movie mm -hmm. coming later this year, and I got to admit, this is the movie I have been looking mm -hmm. forward to all summer long. Anto Antonio. Bandanas. It's yeah. coming out. To, it's coming out tomorrow, actually. Uh, Zorro is excellent film. I did not have the great want to go see this movie. I just, I did. I don't know why. I watched I just, those I movies when I was a kid. I, I watched I, all the know, Zorro movies. I just yeah. wasn't that hot about it, so I'll go see it. I saw it this week, and man, I liked it. I give this one an A. It really is a good motion picture. Well, you remember the story of the up-and-coming group BR549. They began playing their retro, quirky sound to standing-room-only crowds in a small Nashville club. Then Arista Records signed them, and suddenly they were playing to folks all over the world, actually. Yeah, I've been really lucky. Yeah. Well, Billy Joe is taking his talent further than music these days. You may have seen him in his big-screen debut as Robert Duvall's pal in The Apostle. He's really good, and yeah. later this year, he'll be shooting another movie in Arkansas. Well, what happens when you take three bull riders and a rock and roller and put them on the same stage? Well, you get the new country band called The Great Divide. There's just a lot more people sitting in the driveway today than there were back then. 
We want you to know that video you just saw, Pour Me a Vacation, is one of the most requested videos on CMT. Well, Dee Ford Bailey is one of those pioneers who crossed the Great Divide in history. He was country music's first black star, and his harmonica magic helped make him a member of the Grand Ole Opry. Dee Ford only made a handful of commercial records, and fans have had a hard time finding his music. But now a 26-cut CD is shedding new light on this legend, and Dee Ford Bailey Jr. told us how his father was secretly preserving music for future generations. just working poor Steve to death this week. On Saturday, he's going to be back with you for This Week in Country Music. Right you are. Lisa Stewart <laughs> and I will have features on Martina McBride, Mark Chestnut, and a superstar who is no stranger to honky tonks. I was playing in a club for about 20 people. Things have changed a, a little for Clay. Yes, you? indeed. Good but thing, Yeah, too. I guess so. <laughs> this Week in Country Music airs every Saturday at 7 p.m. Eastern right here on TNN.